Hey, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the 10 Storage War lockers that amazed everyone. If you're a fan of Storage Wars, make sure to leave a like on the video. Also, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we release our daily videos. Now with all that being said, let's get right to the video. Number 1. Renee's Museum Locker oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. Even if it's a remake, it's at least $200. These are all like English hunting scenes, easily $300. Renee and his wife Casey scored big in season 6 with a unit that can be best described as a small museum. The couple discovered an endless collection of high value pieces that range from a beautiful grandfather clock in mint condition, oil canvas paintings worth up to 8,000 each, and even a set of Baroque by Wallace collectible silver that were easily worth at least 2 grand. The collection also included various pictures, model ships, artistic flower pots, and statues from places like Africa and Asia. In the end, the couple of once in a blue moon hall was worth over $50,000. Business. This is like you chase it your whole career to find you like this. <gasps> this stack right here is $600. I'll guarantee you I'll get $1,500 for this pair. Wow. Number two, Brandy and Jared's Toy Trove. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in this unit. Are you ready? While Brandy Passante and Jared Schultz were definitely the underdogs of the show, they were also hardworking rookies who didn't employ manipulative tactics like the other bidders. We're looking at you, Dave Hester. While the couple usually end up losing more money than they gain, that wasn't always the case. After storage shark Hester tried to sabotage the couple by driving up the price, they managed to win a unit for $1,700 and found around $13,000 worth of classic toys inside. Not bad for the underdogs. You think each one of those bins is worth 30 bucks? Yeah. 20 bins at 30 bucks a piece? 600 bucks? Oh my god, look at this thing, Brandy. Gas powered plane? It's at least 200. Number three, Ricky and Bubba's gold gun. Check it out. What do you think? I can tell by the holster right now, it looks old. Look at that. That's very nice. It's a Colt 1849. In a Storage Wars Texas episode called Raiders of the Lost Arcana, Ricky and Bubba were excited to have found an antique gold gun. Upon bringing the gun to an appraiser, the duo learned that it was a Colt 1849 dating back to the 1860s. The gun featured a faint engraving on the cylinder that depicted a fight between a Texas Ranger and an Indian. The 150 year old gun ended up being valued at about $25,000 thanks to its model and age. Is 1849 the date or that's just a model? Well, the serial number on this 19039 dates it to like 1860, which would have been last year. Number 4 Renee's Video Game Collection. Yes, I would like a card. Stuff, yeah. So here, that's one of the NES games. Like, it's not part in the store as I'm pricing it, because the fluffy gamer came in, broke down the door, took the game, just In another huge find for Renee Neshoda, Season 10 saw the Barking Hunter land a locker for a low price of $1,500. Inside the unit, Renee found nothing but a large collection of video games. This monstrous collection was huge, filling up the entire storage unit and was clearly assembled by a collector who knew their stuff. Throughout the very long process of ending up the seemingly endless collection of vintage entertainment pieces, it quickly became clear that this wasn't just a massive pile of surplus. With no duplicates in the mix, the dusty pile of memorabilia contained everything from rare Sega Genesis games to a copy of NES game Bubble Bubble Part 2, which was worth several hundred dollars on its own. The whole collection, once it had been counted up, was worth upwards of 50000 making it Renee's favorite find of all time, and proving that retro video games are still in business. Battle totes. Kirby's Adventure. Super Contra. Number five, Barry's Piano. The old, in here. The old Broadway, uh, <laughs> Broadway and Santa Clara facility. He's a little. Hey, uh, uh, I'm locked in the bathroom. Man. Somebody hear something? Fan favorite Barry Wise proved he was more than just a storage hobbyist when he made an exciting discovery in the first season. The retired antique collector was always entertaining to watch as he made his bids, took his chances, and often fell flat on his face. However, this time, Barry's oddball instincts made him a nice 11,625 profit. In the episode, a seemingly random locker was opened up that seemed to be filled with nothing more than beauty salon equipment. Set on opening up his own barbershop, Y snapped up the unit for a mere $275. When he got inside though, he was pleasantly surprised to find a 1928 Marshall and Window Piano among the hair supplies. It was valued between $10,000 to $12,000, netting Y's a nice profit of $11,625. Not a bad haul, and certainly one of the cheapest deals on the list. Broadway and Santa Clara facility. He's a little... Uh, hey! Uh, I'm locked in the bathroom, man. Somebody hear something? 
Number 6, Daryl Sheet, Holy Grail. All spawn toys. Top of the line, the hard to get spawn toys. That right there is about another $400 box because it goes all the way to the bottom. Daryl Sheets rightfully earned his nickname The Gambler since he's always taking huge risks that many of the other builders are not willing to do. He proved his luck when he invested 2700 into getting a storage locker and soon discovering that every penny was worth it. The unit could only be called a comic book gold, as it was stuffed to the brim with mint condition comic book memorabilia. Daryl fittingly dubbed the locker the Holy Grail of Toys as it contains an endless supply of G.I. Joes, Hot Wheels, and a host of other collectible dolls and toys valued at $10 apiece. The unit's worth kept rising as she's tallied up the mountain of collectibles, finally setting on a grand total that topped 90000 This find proved that sometimes the gamble is worth it. It's about another $400 box because it goes all the way to the bottom. Oh my god, look at this. These are really nice. Oh. <laughs> this whole thing's just full of them, all brand new. Number 7, Barry's Creepy Statue. What the hell is in that box? You can only see somebody's... Barry Weiss came through in a big way during season two, when he showed up late to an auction and quickly bought what appears to be a worthless locker with a couch and a few odd items, all for a seemingly overpriced 1525 But in this case, the collector knew what he was doing. He had spotted a small box tucked away in the back, something that he absolutely needed to investigate. It turned out to be a creepy sculpture of a wooden bus with real inset dentures and glass eyes, along with a window in the back of its head that revealed an entire scene taking place inside the statue's brain. The rather odd piece turned out to be a bit of a collector's item and was valued at $6,000. The only problem? Barry was too enamored with the head and ended up keeping it for himself. I finally made it here. They got valet parking at these auctions? Because I'm late. Number 8, Frank Gutierrez Paintings. Daryl Sheets holds the title of the most valuable storage unit to actually air on television. The gambler stayed true to his nickname as he invested a hefty 3600 on a locker solely because he liked the look of some of the artwork inside. The artwork turned out to be all original paintings by Frank Gutierrez. She's later found out that the unit actually belonged to Gutierrez himself. Much to everyone's disbelief, the lot turned out to be valued at more than $300,000. Despite the skepticism, she said he spoke with Gutierrez and was nice enough to return some of the artist's personal items, just not the thousands of dollars worth of artwork. That I see all around this room. I would say that you have maybe about 300000 Number 9, Brandy and Jarrett's Furniture. That's exactly what we want for our new store. Open the new store with brand new furniture in there. That's exactly, that's the image we want to portray. Every single thing in the unit was worth money. Brandy and Jared's most profitable locker came from a unit filled with brand new furniture. As Jared said, everything in a unit was worth money. None of it was trash. At the time of purchasing the locker, the couple were in the process of opening a new store and they decided that they could sell the furniture from the locker at their store. This proved to be a smart move, as they priced the furniture anywhere between $300 to $3,500 per piece. Being able to open their new store with all new furniture proved that this was a smart buy. That's exactly, that's the image we want to portray. Every single thing in the unit was worth money. There was no trash in the unit. We didn't have to throw anything away. We didn't have to do any work. We moved it in. We didn't even... And finally, number 10, Rita Ackerman Paintings. Daryl Sheets definitely has a knack for sniffing out worthwhile containers. His very cash in the show came from the storage container of a famous model. Inside, he found dozens of paintings by modern day Picasso, Rita Ackerman. With each individual painting valued in thousands of dollars, you would think Daryl would have immediately jumped at the opportunity to sell them. However, being the art connoisseur that he is, Daryl explained his plan is to let the paintings mature, therefore gaining more value. It's no wonder why Daryl managed to amass a huge fortune from storage hunting. And that's all for now. Stay tuned for more exciting content when we return. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos.